We'll now turn our attention to the main topic of this unit, proper time. Recall that we've been talking about three types of time interval. Proper time, coordinate time, and the space-time interval. Coordinate time is just the time between two events as measured by a clock or a pair of synchronized clocks in an inertial reference frame. The space-time interval is this special time difference, similar to distance, that is the same in all inertial reference frames. And we have the metric formula that tells us how to calculate it. The space-time interval squared, delta s squared, is equal to delta t squared minus delta x squared. But what about the proper time? So uh, first let's recall what the proper time is. So a proper time is a time interval between two events measured by a clock that's present at both events, but not necessarily an inertial clock. So let me set up a situation that will um, illustrate proper time and that we'll analyze in the, uh, for the next little while. So Anastasia and Beowulf start together, and then Beowulf begins a journey. And the beginning of that journey, we'll call that event A. And Beowulf wanders off for a while, but eventually he gets lonely and comes back. And when they reunite, that will be event B. So we want, we're interested in the time interval between event A and event B. So for Anastasia, she'll be measuring the space-time interval. She's at rest, so certainly an inertial uh, reference frame. She's present at both events, so that makes uh, the time that she would measure the space-time interval. Beowulf will have a different clock reading between A and B, a different time interval, and he's following a proper time. He's present at both events, but, and his clock is as well, and, um, but he's not uh, in an inertial reference frame. He could be speeding up, and then for sure he's going to slow down and have to go in the other direction in order to come back to, re, to rejoin with Anastasia. So Beowulf's velocity is not constant. So what that means is if we plotted Beowulf's trajectory um, on a space-time diagram, if we spotted, hit, plotted his world line, that world line would not be straight. So we're going to have to think about how we're going to deal um, with curved world lines in space-time. And you can probably see where this is headed. We're going to take that curved world line, break it up into lots of little world lines that we can pretend are straight, and use a metric equation on them. So here's the situation. Anastasia and Beowulf start together. Beowulf goes off and then comes back. So let's draw this scenario on a space-time diagram. So Anastasia will be at the origin, and so her world line will just be this. And Beowulf is going to go to the right for a while, and then is going to come back. And let's label these events. A is Beowulf's departure. B is Beowulf's return. So this shows Beowulf moving away and then back. Remember that one way we can um, think about space-time diagrams is as a movie that's sort of flowing upward. So here the blue line is Beowulf, black is Anastasia, and Beowulf goes farther away, oops, and then comes back and they're together again. All right, so we're interested in the proper time along Beowulf's world line. Let's see, so let me just label this, remind us that this is Beowulf's world line. And I want to know for the proper time along Beowulf's world line. All right, so we don't have a formula for proper time, per se, but we do have a formula for the space-time interval, and that's the metric equation. The metric equation, or the space-time interval, that applies to um, inertial clocks. And Beowulf's clock is definitely not inertial. His 
velocity is changing. However, if we look at just a tiny segment of Beowulf's journey, i.e. we zoom in closer and closer and closer, that curve starts to look straight. There it is in focus. So what we're going to do is just what we did um, in this scenario. We're going to look at a little segment here. And say, all right, that part is pretty close to straight. So um, I can figure out, uh, I can use the metric equation for this little segment because um, the velocity is almost constant here because the line is almost straight. So we know how to calculate the space-time interval um, from here to here if we assume that it's constant velocity. So let's do that, and then we're going to add up all the little space-time intervals just like we added up all the little hypotenuses before. So let's see, since this is a little um, interval, I'm going to use a little d, and then this is going to be this. So I just took the square root. So um, before we add up all of these using an integral again, I want to do a little bit of algebra on this term to put it in a simpler form, just like I did algebra on the square root term for the distance example. So I'm going to do that. Let me do that here. So I've got um, ds is dt squared minus dx squared. And I'm going to factor out a dt, or I guess a dt squared, I should say. So it might not be immediately obvious why I'm doing that, but hopefully I can convince you that this is a legal, true move. If we distribute, dt squared times 1 is dt dt squared times dx squared over dt squared, the dt squareds cancel, I get minus dx squared. So this is indeed a true statement. I can then separate um, things under the square root sign like this. And dt squared square root, that just turns into dt. So I took this dt squared square root, rewrote it as dt, and then I put parentheses around the stuff that's getting squared here. So there's one more nice thing that happens. Check this out dx over dt, or delta x over delta t, that's a um, how, distance traveled over the time traveled. Hey, that's just, that's just velocity. So this um, turns into this. 1 minus um, v squared. So I can write this as this. This is just velocity, Beowulf speed, the speed along the world line. And um, I can do that because this quantity, dx dt, change in position over change in time, is the velocity. All right, so that's a little bit of algebra to get, well, algebra to get here, and then a little bit of physics using this fact. And we have this, which I think looks um, a lot nicer than that. All right, so, um, so, Let's see. So let me copy this result here. 1 minus v squared dt. So now we can do like we did before. The total proper time along this curved world line in space is going to be just the sum of the space-time intervals along all these straight little line segments. 
So let me write that out. So the proper time along a world line is the sum of the space-time intervals along the world line. So we take this world line, this curve through space-time, and we zoom in segment by segment and say, aha, these segments look straight. Therefore, um, in this little time segment here, Beowulf's clock is inertial, constant velocity. Therefore, I can use the metric equation and say that Beowulf's time uh, for that little moment is actually a space-time interval. I do that and do a little bit of algebra and I get this. This is the amount that um, has elapsed on Beowulf's watch in this time uh, interval delta t. So to get the total time that elapses on his watch, we need to add up all the times, all these little space-time intervals along this world line. And if we do that, um, we can express that using calculus like this. This is the definite integral of 1 minus v squared square root from ta to tb, where ta and tb are the coordinate times here. And the symbol for proper time is um, delta tau. So this is a Greek letter tau, a, b to indicate that it's the time from a to b. All right, so um, this is a big result. I should put it in a box. In the next video, we'll talk about the um, special case when v is constant, and then the math becomes a lot simpler. So I'll talk a little bit about that. We'll work through an example together, and you'll see how this all works.